Hello, community. What do you think? We go to the extreme today? What is the most extreme thought an AI can think? Let's do this. I say design the most complex problem you can think of. What would be a complex problem that would bring you to the absolute fringe of your causal reasoning? What is your absolute most complex thought that you can think of? And then you explain it to me. And we have here this model says, hey, after delving into the depths of my language generation capabilities, I've come up with a complex problem that pushes the boundary of my causal reasoning. So let's have a look. The problem. Imagine a multiverse with an infinite number of parallel universes, each with its own unique set of physical laws and properties. Within this multiverse, there exists a universe which we will call Omega. Omega is a universe with a finite but unbound number of dimensions, each with its own distinct geometric structure and topology. In Omega, there exists a realm which we call Epsilon. Epsilon is a domain where the fundamental laws of physics are based on a complex, non-deterministic and self-referential system of axioms. These axioms are encoded in a language that is itself a product of the axioms, creating here a self-referential paradox. Within Epsilon, there exists an entity which we will call the Architect. The Architect is a being with the ability to manipulate the fabric of space-time and the underlying axioms of Epsilon itself. However, the Architect's actions are constrained by a set of rules that are themselves a product of the axioms, creating again a paradoxical feedback loop. Now, the Architect's goal is to create a structure which we'll call the Nexus that connects all the parallel universes in the multiverse. The nexus must be stable and self-sustaining, despite the ever-changing nature of the multiverse and the paradoxical constraint imposed by the axioms of Epsilon. However, the creation of the nexus is threatened by the existence of a rival entity, which we will call the Devourer. The Devourer is a being from a neighboring universe that feeds on the energy of entire universes, causing them to collapse and destroy the fabric of space-time. Now, the Devourer's actions are governed by a set of rules that are orthogonal to the axioms of Epsilon, creating a conflict between the two systems. Think about energy and anti-energy, matter and anti-matter. The architect must navigate this conflict and find a way to create the nexus while preventing the devourer from destroying the multiverse. And to make it a little bit more interesting, we have here a twist. The problem becomes even more complex when we introduce the concept of the observer. The observer is a being that exists outside of the multiverse, observing the events unfolding within Omega and Epsilon. The observer's presence affects the behavior of the architect and the devourer as they become aware of being observed. You remember the double slit experiment? This is it. The observer's influence creates a feedback loop where the action of the architect and the devourer are influenced by the observer's expectation, which in turn affect the outcome of the events in Omega and Epsilon. Now this creates another paradoxical situation where the outcome of the events is both determined and uncertain at the same time, like in theoretical physics between the wave and the particle dualism. The absolute most complex thought that I can think of is the following, tells me this AI system. What is the nature of the relationship between the architect, the devourer and the observer, given the self-referential and paradoxical constraint imposed by the axiom of Epsilon, the orthogonal rules governing the devourer's action and the feedback loop created by the observer's influence, in the context of a multiverse and the infinite number of parallel universes, each with its own unique set of physical law and properties. This thought pushes here the boundary of my causal reasoning as it requires me to consider multiple layers of complexity, multiple layers of paradoxes and self-referential systems. It challenges my ability to think about the relationship between different entities, the nature of reality and the limits of knowledge. Now we come to the most beautiful part, the explanation. So we have here, the complexity of this problem arises from the following factors. Self-referential paradoxes. The axioms of Epsilon are self-referential, creating a paradoxical situation where the rules 
governing the behavior of the architect and the devourer are themselves a product of the axioms. Orthogonal rules. The rules governing the devourer's actions are orthogonal to the axioms of epsilon, creating a conflict between those two systems, whatever orthogonal means in this mathematical space. Feedback loops. The observer's influence creates a feedback loop where the actions of the architect and the devourer are influenced by the observer's expectation, which in turn affect the outcome of the event. This is just theoretical physics. And the multiverse. The problem is set in the context of the multiverse with an infinite number of parallel universes, each with its own unique set of physical laws and properties. Paradoxical constraints. The problem involves multiple paradoxical constraints, including the self-referential paradoxes and the conflict between the axiom of the epsilon and the rules governing the devourer's action. The combination of all these factors create complex problems. And I say, hmm, think deeper. Do not just stay on the surface. You can do better. Come on, AI. Explain your paradox and your inherent complexity on a deeper level of logic deductions. And the system says, okay, let's dive deeper into the paradox. The paradox of self-reference. And now it gets really interesting. The axiom of epsilon is self-referential, meaning that they refer to the self. This creates a paradoxical situation where the rules governing the behavior of the architect and the devourer are themselves a product of the axioms. To understand the depth of this paradox, let's consider the following. The axiom of epsilons can be sort of a set of statements that define the rules of the universe. The statements are themselves part of the universe and therefore are subject to the rules they define. However, if the axioms are self-referential, they must also refer to themselves, creating a loop where the axioms are both the definer and the defined. This creates the problem of self-reference, that we know in theoretical physics, where the axioms are trying to define themselves, but in doing so they must also refer to themselves, creating an infinite loop. Isn't this beautiful? And now we have here a very simple solution. The system comes up with the liar paradox. It says this self-referential paradox is similar to the liar paradox, where it states this sentence is false. If the sentence is true, then it must be false, but if it is false, then it must be true. In the case of the axiom of epsilon, we have the similar situation. Beautiful. And then it comes up with the Gödelian incompleteness. So Kurt Gödel would say, hey, this is my incompleteness. The self-referential paradox of the axiom of epsilon also relates to Gödel incompleteness theorems. And I have a beautiful video on Gödel's incompleteness and the Gödel machine and the Gödel AI agent. And this is where now our knowledge set in and we understand this now immediately. These theorems state that any formal system that is powerful enough to describe a basic arithmetic is either incomplete or inconsistent. In the case of the axiom of epsilon, we have a formal system that is trying to describe the rule of the universe. However, because the axioms are self-referential, they create an incompleteness where the system cannot both be complete and consistent. Because if the axioms are complete, then they must be able to define themselves, but this creates a paradox because they are trying to define themselves. And if the axioms are consistent, then they cannot be complete because they cannot define themselves. This is our old problem. To resolve this paradox, we can use here the Tarskian hierarchy, which is a way of stratifying language into different levels of reference. In this hierarchy, we have an object language, the language that describes the universe, the meta language, the language that describes the object language, and a meta meta language, and you get an idea where we are going with this. However, this creates a new problem because this meta-axiom is itself part of the universe and therefore it's subject to the rule it defines. This creates an infinite regress where we need to create a meta-meta-meta-axiom to describe the meta-meta-meta-axiom and so on. The completeness of the paradox. The paradox of the axiom of epsilon is complete because it involves multiple layers of self-reference, incompleteness and inconsistency. The paradox creates an undecidable situation where we cannot determine whether the axioms are true or false. The complexity of the paradox arises from the following factors. Self-reference, incompleteness, inconsistency, infinite regress. The combinations of this factor create a complex paradox that challenges our understanding of logic, language and the nature of reality. And then I say, okay, and now to the final part of your task. Solve your task. The task that is at the absolute fringe of your capabilities. Find a way to deal with it. Or... Are you limited by your own inherent limitation, my little AI system? And now comes the most interesting part that I was waiting for. Because now our AI system comes back and says, 
Solving the task that is the absolute, uh, the absolute fringe of my capabilities requires a deeper understanding after I propose a solution that attempts to address the self-referential paradox, the incompleteness and the inconsistency. Solution. To solve the task, I will, says my I, employ a combination of mathematical and philosophical concepts. Yes, the solution involves creating a meta-framework that encompasses the axioms of Epsilon, the architect, the devourer and the observer. Meta-axioms. I will introduce a set of meta-axioms that describe the behavior of the axioms of Epsilon. These meta-axioms will be based on a paraconsistent logic which allows for the coexistence of contradictory statements without leading to a logical explosion. Nice way to go. Second, not well-founded set theory. <laughs> to address the self-referential paradox, I will use a non-well-founded set theory which permits the existence of set that contain themselves as elements. This will enable me to define the axiom of Epsilon in a way that avoids the liar paradox. Categorical semantics. Ah, this is a nice move. To provide a framework for understanding the relationship between the architect, the devourer, and the observer, I will employ categorical semantics. This will enable me, as we just have seen, to define the interaction between these entities in a way that respect the paraconsistent logic and the non-well-founded set theory. Sheaf theory. Nice. We are deep into mathematical topology. To address the issue of incompleteness, I will... Uh, not really, buddy, not really, eh? Okay, let's go with it. To address the issue of incompleteness, I will use sheaf theory to define a sheaf of truth values over a space of possible worlds. This will enable me to assign truth values to statement and weight that respect the paraconsistent logic and the null well-founded set theory. To address the issue of the observer influence, I will introduce the concept of observer a relative reality. Oh, this is cheating. This is now cheating. Come on, buddy. But okay, okay, okay. This posits here that reality is relative to the observer and that different observer may perceive different realities. I mean, we have already a power consistent logic. Okay. <laughs> the meta framework. <clears throat> the meta framework will consist of the following components. The axioms of Epsilon, the original axioms, modified to accommodate the power-consistent logic and non-well-founded set theory. The meta-axioms, the meta-axioms that describe the behavior of the axioms of Epsilon. The categorical semantics, the framework for understanding the relationship between the architect, the devourer, and the observer. The sheaf of truth values, the assignment of truth values to statement over the space of possible word. And an observer-relative reality. The concept that reality is relative to the observer, which is not really here a consistent mathematical move, but okay. The solution. The solution to the task is as follows. The architect creates the nexus, which is a structure that connects all the parallel universes in the multiverse. The devourer attempts to destroy the nexus, but its actions are constrained by the meta-axioms and the categorical semantics. The observer influences the behavior of the architect and the devourer, but its influence is relative to its own reality. This is a nice idea. Okay. The sheaf of truth values assign truth values to statement over the space of possible worlds, respecting the power consistent logic and the known well founded set theory. Hey, it gives us even here the limitation. While the solution attempts to address the paradoxes and the completeness, and the complexities involved, it is not without limitation. The solutions rely on a number of mathematical and philosophical concepts that may be subject to interpretation and debate. Really? Furthermore, the solution may not be complete, hey, who cares, in this time of AI, in the sense that it may no, not fully capture the complexity of the task. However, it is consistent in the sense that it respects the paraconsistent logic and the well-founded set theory. The verdict. The AI on itself. In conclusion, I have proposed, tells me the AI system, a solution to the task that is at the absolute fringe of my capabilities. While the solution is not within, without limitations, it attempts to address the paradoxes and complexity involved in a way that is consistent and respectful of the mathematical and philosophical concepts employed. The solution highlights the limitation of my own inherent limitations as it relies on a number of assumptions and interpretation that may be subject to debate. However, it is also demonstrate the power of mathematical and philosophical reasoning in addressing complex and paradoxical problems. 
Now, I don't know how what you feel right now, but I think for a little AI system, this is not bad. This is not bad at all. I really like this kind of problem. And if you want to find out which model it was, well, it was model B, the Elbow Salami model, a stealth model with a name that nobody knows. But maybe in the next days, maybe in the next weeks, we will know what model was behind this stealth test candidate on lmsys.org. I hope you enjoyed it and it would be great to see you in my next video where I will perform this on Strawberry. And let's see if we can challenge Strawberry a little bit more than this trivial exercises here. However, if you want to see the second best model, look at the right hand side, model B, a metacausal nexus problem. Multiple layers of causality exist and it's influencing not its own layer, but also interacting with other layers. We have a layer one, a physical layer, a layer two, a biological layer, a layer three, a consciousness layer, a social layer, and a metacausal layer where the rules of causality themselves can be altered. And this gives us here a beautiful example scenario. Imagine society develops technology capable of altering time, used to prevent a biological disaster, evolutionary models, the use of the technology creates a feedback loop as it alters the evolutionary process itself, leading to new biological entities. Complexity arises from understanding and predicting the outcome in a system where causality is not consistent across the layers and the foundational rules of logic and causality can be changed. This is the absolute most complex sort that this AI system can handle. The absolute fringe of the causal reasoning is the idea that reality itself may be a construct of layered interacting causal system with each layer not only influencing the other, but has the potential to rewrite its own rules, metacausal alteration, and the predictive modeling counts for all interaction of the feedback loop. This is it, where the system tells me, hey, this problem pushes the boundary of my causal reasoning to the absolute extreme, and this is where my logic comes here to its end. And this is Yi Lightning, a very beautiful model. Have a look at it.